All right, so I was going to do a, a Manly Manners video, and Mrs. W came in with a, um, a comment that came in from one of your wives um, about, and it went something, I'll paraphrase, went something like this. So my husband, um, uh, I, I'm, a, I'm an avid, I'm a, I'm a faithful Christian. Um, I can't get my husband uh, to go to church with me because uh, the few times he's been there, uh, the guys that, uh, that he meets uh, that are regular church attendees, um, are just these weak, spineless men uh, that I have nothing in common with. And, and I, I just, I don't want anything to do with that. That's not who I am. Um, that's not who I'll ever be. And that's certainly not who I want to hang out with. And I was thinking about that and that really resonated with me because that's my biggest gripe um, about many of the organized churches and the religion is that this premise uh, that uh, anyone who is a believer in Christ has to be this weak, milk toast, meek and mild, um, uh, nothing of a man, which doesn't appeal to me. I mean, you, you, you all, uh, guys are made how they're made. Uh, some of us um, um, are, are hyper aggressive. Some of us are hyper competitive. Some of us um, are, are a little more intellectual. You know, all, we're all different. And this idea that we have to dumb down our, 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 our physical prowess, we have to dumb down our uh, desire for, for risk and for danger, we have to dumb down our intellect to be part of this group is, well, it's not appealing. So I was thinking about that, um, uh, and I was thinking of this quote that I came across years ago, and I was going to use this as an example of this organization, this church organization, how, how they have, a, how they have, it was a plan um, to, to misconstrue and to per portray Christ in a way that he never was uh, to try to uh, attack and destroy and beat down humanity or, or masculinity. And the thing that, um, the quote was, it was something like the church, I was paraphrasing, I was thinking in my mind that the church has been very effective at declawing the Lion of Judah. And if you don't know what the Lion of Judah is, the Lion of Judah is the lineage of what Christ came from. And the, each of the 12 tribes of Israel was associated with an animal. And Judah was the lion, um, referring to, it was prophecy, referring to the second coming, first and second coming of Christ. So I went in searching this quote, and I realized for all these years that I had been completely wrong about it, that this wasn't a quote that I could use uh, to uh, attack organized religion. It was a quote that was that, that, that was basically saying it like it was. And I, I, I read it two or three times and I thought, good grief, I had that wrong the whole, the whole way. Let's, let me read this quote to you really quickly and then we'll talk about this. This was from a British writer, a woman by the name of Dor Dorothy Sawyers that was born in 1893. She died in 1957. She was a British author and she's the one that penned this quote. Now, now listen to this. The quote is, the people who hanged Christ never to do them justice, accused him of being a bore. On the contrary, they thought him too dynamic to be safe. It has been left for later generations to muffle up that shattering personality and surround him with the atmosphere of tedium. That's some good writing there. We have very effectively paired the claws, paired the claws of the Lion of Judah, certified him meek and mild, and recommend him as a fitting household pet for pale curates and pious old ladies. What's a curate? A curate is at like an assistant to a pastor, you know, maybe a deacon or, or you know, all of those non-clergy members that uh, the many of the very men uh, that we meet that we just, we disdain, that we don't have anything in common with and that we certainly don't want to be like. Uh, pale curates, I thought that was a good way to, uh, of looking at it. So <clears throat> right there, she summed it up. So what the, what the church has done uh, over the last several hundred years has, uh, has as according to Dorothy, has turned Christ into this tame house pet. Um, I don't mean to be irreverent here, I'm irreverent, I, I, but I, 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 I just don't know how else to say it. And that's very true. Uh, it's very appealing, a personality It's very appealing to old, old ladies, it's very appealing to children, and, and we don't want to scare the children, of course, when we tell the stories of Christ, so we omit all of the things that uh, uh, maybe uh, are a little bit, uh, uh, might show a little bit of a uh, dynamic personality as she puts it and and we have all of these photographs or these paintings and this gentle Jesus meek and mild and lying with the lamb and all of that and what we have been sold is this idea of meekness the meekness of Christ is weakness and it is not 
Because if we go back, if we strip away all of that nonsense, everything, all of that, that uh, poison that, we, that has been taught us uh, throughout, throughout our life, and we look at the facts, who are the men that really were uh, held up as heroes of God back in the day? Uh, just a couple examples. We have Gideon. He was, a, he was a general. We have Samson. He was a, a mighty man. He was a soldier. We have a man, after Dave, God, a man after God's own heart. We have King David, who, even though he did horrible things, had his best friend murdered and so he could steal his, wife, his best friend's wife, uh, and, and, and uh, hundreds of other things, God called him a man after his own heart. Now, was King David, was he uh, sitting on his hands in the pew? Was he uh, a, a pale curate? Was he uh, one of these uh, gray men, these milk toast men that we all despise, that we've come in contact with uh, at many of these churches? Uh, he was not. Uh, and we look at all of those heroes. We look at, even we go to the New Testament, we look at Paul who wrote, I believe, what, over half of the New Testament. He was a firebrand. He was very non-conventional. He was very much a liberal. He was very much anti-establishment. He twisted the tail of the establishment. He mixed things up. He caused huge fights and huge issues. And we take Christ himself. When There were times when he was really upset. Twice he went in cleansed the temple, scared all of the people out of there, turned over the tables. Was that gentle Jesus, meek and mild? Yes, there was a time and a place for kindness and don't, uh, and ne never um, confuse meekness with weakness. But this idea that we need to put away everything that we makes us masculine, that makes us men, that makes us soldiers and 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 firefighters or uh, good business people or doctors or wh whatever it is that you do, construction workers, to put that away um, and shelf and suppress all of that so that we can conform to this false notion of this meek, weak, milk toast man, um, that's just not the case. So I understand and I can sympathize with you, uh, but uh, if you don't like if you live in a small town and, and you have a you have a small church and, and and you go in there and you run into this and you don't like that, um, well, maybe it's time to change that. Um, and I'm speaking to my speaking to myself as well. I have um, uh, I've made that excuse many times. And Mrs. W, well, what about this? You know, we try to go here and try to go there and. And, and I go in there, and I'm expecting, you know, these uh, these heroes of the Old Testament, you know, but uh, with the swords and such. But uh, you don't typically find that. So um, I don't know what the answer is, um, other than um, take heart in the fact that um, I believe, uh, I, I believe, it seems to me anyway, um, that uh, that God would much prefer a man that went out boldly and aggressively with the best of intentions. Um, um, to, and to actually, a man of action willing to do something uh, than someone that was too afraid um, and sat on the sidelines and did nothing. So uh, don't uh, don't buy into this nonsense. And and I, um, I, you know, I've ran into it personally. I'll close with this. You know, my own, uh, I, you know, my wife and I are members of a of a denominational church. And I'll tell you what, with um, with the success of this channel. Uh, and the number of people that I have the ability to reach, um, I have heard uh, that they would absolutely love uh, to get me rolled into their program, uh, you know, into uh, uh, one of their colleges uh, and, and get, you know, become a pastor or whatever and, and try to utilize what we've built with this channel uh, to spread their message. But they can't do it. They don't want to do it because I, I'm not safe for them. They don't like the hand, they don't like the guns, they don't like the, uh, uh, they, they, I just won't conform to their idea of what a clergyman should be or what an idea of what a, a, a pastor should be. It's too dangerous for them, it's too scary, it's too unorthodox, it, it's, it's just, it doesn't fit the mold and so they can't have it. And, and which I think is laughable because uh, I mean, what, what, the, the reach that we have here and, and the and the community that, that we've built here is so much bigger than anything that uh, you could do as a, as a pastoring in a small church or or holding a little evangelistic meeting over here. Not that that's not important. I'm not saying that. You, you maybe you meet the person or you uh, bring the message to the gospel to the person that that is the next uh, Paul, the next David, or what have you. But um, I understand. I understand. So do I have an answer for your question? And, and I'm kind of, I did this video because I get this a lot. Um, 
No, I, I don't know. Um, I, as you know, I'm not a big fan of, uh, of turnkey organized religion. Uh, the important thing is this, uh, what the church is, it's, it's a meeting of like-minded individuals. And this idea that it has to be un- in a building under a steeple uh, with a cross on the door or whatever, is, is, it's, it's not the, that's not the case. The best churches, the best, um, uh, most fulfilling uh, ways to, to learn and educate and, and to lift one another up uh, in the body is, is, to, is to be in one another's homes. Um, if you f- know someone as a fellow believer, start start loosely. Say meet Saturday, meet Sunday, whatever is your day of worship, and and, and go to a coffee shop and sit down and 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 have a topic and talk about it, or be in each other's homes. So it, the fact that you don't go to to a organized religion in an organized building and something that's that's nothing wrong with that. That's fine for a lot of people, but for for a lot of other folks, it's not. So uh, I guess the answer is 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 be be strong in your faith. Um, be uh, not w- uh, don't compromise. Um, when you go out to eat, um, say uh, grace with your family. It doesn't matter who's around, or uh, you know, just make these bold statements, and, and God will honor you. And what you'll do is you'll find uh, like-minded people that maybe didn't have the courage uh, to speak up, and that will start building friendships, and that that could start into. Um, a small group in your community that where you guys could can meet one of it because it's important to meet. It's important to be together with fellow Christians just to encourage one another. Uh, no man can be an island. It's, it's a lot of people think, well, I'm just going to move to the mountains and and I'm going to read my Bible and I'm going to do my thing and and I'm not going to be have any influence on the outside world. No, that's that's not what happens. That's not the best way to do it. Sometimes you're strong and you can be a strength for other people. Sometimes you're weak. Um, and you need to, to receive, be the recipient of that strength. So uh, just be bold in your faith. Don't put it out. Don't, I, I don't, I'm not an advocate of uh, lecturing anyone. Uh, lead by example and preach a sermon every day of your life and speak only when absolutely necessary. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video.